to do is move it down. Oh, um, God! Woo! I guess you found a nerf. Yep. Oh, my tried to. gosh! This is this is some of the nastiest stuff you found on yeah, me, huh? What's going on out there in YouTube land? Today we are with a living legend, the man, the myth, also the legend, the king of West Virginia, 2006, world's strongest man, the man with the biggest, meanest hands that'll put a hole right through your chest if you made him mad, but he's kind of a gentle giant, Phil Fister. Welcome to the office, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, actually, I've been here for a little while. Yeah, he's been here for a couple days. He's, he's gonna have a residence here. We've been working on him a little bit. So you can see we got a little bruising on him, but um, kind of tell us a little bit about what's going on with the shoulder, um, how long it's been going on, and you know. You know, um, it's probably something that's been going on in retrospect for like 20 years or more. Um, but only in the last year have I really said, you know, I need to limber up this shoulder. I need to get some range of motion. And um, basically, I can't raise it very well. So it'll go to right here. And that's after three days of us working mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And I can, you know, I can power through that. I can get it up. Um, whereas this shoulder, you know, it's effortless. Okay. And, you know, like when I move it around, it pops and creaks and snaps and... Um, no real pain, just no fluidity. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Pat's been working on your ankles a little bit, lubricating those up too. Oh my God! It's like having a whole new set of feet and being able to glide instead of walk along like a Clydesdale or something. Yeah. Backstory: This will be our fourth session, so we've really been trying to unpack exactly what's going on with this shoulder. Obviously, we don't know 100% what's going on in the inside without having an MRI or a CT scan. Um, but we don't have any positive orthopedic tests per se, so we don't have anything that, gl that is glaring as far as rotator cuff insufficiency, um, disc issues, or anything like that. So it seems like it's more mechanical. He has some background. He has kind of an S-curve scoliosis, had it you know, his whole life, um, and obviously picked up a lot of heavy things in his day. Um, but not really as much damage as you would expect given the, the loads that he has put on his body previously. Um, okay, so we're going to do a little bit of work. So the main thing that we're finding, last night we had a big breakthrough. We cleared all the muscles that attached in and around the acromium, so near the AC joint. And he wasn't able to kind of get his hand up and pull like that, so we we're retesting the strength. And as you guys have seen on the channel, that's a lot of times the way that we reset the AC joint. Now, given how big he is, you know, relative to me and how tight the shoulder was, I actually wasn't expecting any movement on it. But we had a, a, a little bit of a reset on the AC, and instantaneously he was able to go up almost all the way to the ceiling. So the goal for today on his last day here is if we can't get all those muscles to tie in even looser and get a full reset on the AC joint. And it's been a huge puzzle. You know, you've put me through, I, honestly, you and your staff to work with me for about three hours a day for the last three days. Yeah. And it's it's been awesome, but it's like a puzzle with lots and lots and lots of layers. And like you mentioned, a big breakthrough last night and yeah. getting that AC joint to move. Yeah. There's another layer that we haven't really assessed, but that collarbone is definitely elevated. Is there a difference in tenderness from side to side, too? Yeah, my right right sides. And we haven't even... Uh, so that's the Clido uh, attachment of the SDM. External Clido mast. So, so there's two branches on the bottom end. Here's the sternal side. Wow! And then the Clido sides up here. So, Phil, is it, are you still doing uh, commentary for WSM? No, my last contest was uh, Arnold 2010 was okay. competing. And then but, I got to do the commentary for Worlds starting in fall of 2010. and did that for three years okay. until they had to leave ESPN and go to CBS Sports Network. Ah. Then they, they, they did keep the Cavs, though, at least for a while. So anybody who grew up in the 90s or 2000s, you know, 2, two 3 a.m., you know, especially if you looked, you were, you were turned on the TV and seeing this guy pick up Atlas Stones and, and Shields and, you know, drag, you know, semis. And def, right. definitely for me, you know, when I was in college, you know, at the peak of me lifting really heavy, I, I used to love, you know, when WSM came on, you know, ESPN2, uh, you know, 10 o'clock at night. I'd just sit there and be like, all right, now I'm motivated. Let's go. Yeah, I remember seeing that stuff for the first time in the, in the mid-90s. And I always thought, gee, if I could ever have a chance to do some of that stuff, I think I could beat some of those guys at some of that stuff. What made you get started? What was the... You know, there was there was um, an ad in Powerlifting USA for a contest called Strongest Man Alive, and someone photocopied it and put it up on the wall at the Key Club gym I, I lifted at, the Holly Strength System. And um, 
they said, Fister, you should try that. So I drove out there for a practice session okay. in May of 98, and that went really well. And then um, the contest was actually postponed until November of 98, but in the meantime, a couple other contests popped up to sort of take its place, be fill-ins, and I won both of those. Those were Paul Armstrong's Extreme Strongman Challenge in Burlington, Iowa, and then Jim Davis held his first ever contest at a biker bar in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, then I got invited to World's Strongest Man in October and didn't make it through the qualifying rounds at the 98 Worlds, but someone was too ill to compete on the first day of finals, so I ended up as the alternate and finished fourth in the world at World's Strongest Man five months in. Wow. To the sport. Oh my Tried gosh! To. This is this is some of the nastiest stuff you found on yeah, me. Huh? It's, it's not as crunchy woo! today. I know it's sore. Scalenes. Scalenes. Neck muscles. So, uh, so you haven't thought about getting into fighting like uh, Marius? Well, you know, if if I lived here and trained with you and your guys in this building, you know, Jackson Wink, you know, gee, maybe I could fight Marius, but I don't <laughs> know, man. You know, us, us strongmen are strangely prone to grandiose fantasy, but yeah, it might, might be fun if, if I thought I had the uh, training skill and experience to get in the ra- octagon with Marius, wouldn't that be something? So do you have a prediction for the Half Thor and Eddie Hall fight? Well, let, let me just first say... You know, thinking about fighting Marius is a hell of a lot different <laughs> than, than <laughs> fighting Thor or Eddie. Yeah. And, you know, um, I don't think you can discount the physical potential of Thor. And who knows how he'll show up. But Eddie, uh, I think the smart money is probably on Eddie. Okay. What do you think? we got a prediction. The, the, where, do you, where would you put well, this? Well, I have money? no idea. You know, Eddie's big, got a bigger presence. You know, he's more frequent on social media. So I think yeah. I'm seeing more clips of him training. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think the bias in my head is to lean towards that. Because that's the thing right now, right? We're getting people in different genres to punch each other in the face. It's like the thing. <laughs> Jake Paul is going to fight Ben Askren. Jake Paul is a YouTuber. He's like 22 okay. maybe. He's got you know, 20 million subs or something like that. He's a good athlete. He was a high school wrestler. And he started boxing, and he, he did a celebrity boxing match recently with this guy, Nate Robinson. He was an NBA player, um, good football player in college, too, great athlete. But Jake knocked that guy out. And so now he's taking on more uh, boxing matches. And so Ben Askren was an Olympic wrestler, national champion, college wrestler. And he fought in MMA for about 10 years. He was undefeated. He was like 20-0, and 0, but his, he would take guys down and smash them. So his striking wasn't high level for MMA, but he's still somebody who has... 20 something professional kind fights. Of sounds like the smart money's on Ben Ass. Uh, on him. So Ben's 39, 38 maybe. And, yeah. and you know, Jake Jake's Paul. young. Yeah, he's young. So that's like, that's that's the game, right? You have older, seasoned guy with fight experience versus young, explosive, talented guy. Full of piss and vinegar. And, and that's what makes wins. it interesting, yeah. right? Like, so oh. that's like the thing going on right now. You see all these matches. And I think Eddie and, and, and Hathor is an interesting one too because big height difference, right? Right. But also, I think there's a little bit of athletic difference as well. I think Eddie, you know, moves better for a big guy. If you've seen some of the documentaries on Eddie, he's kind of otherworldly in his uh, level of commitment and intensity and dedication. I mean, he was he was literally willing to die to win World's Strongest Man. And me personally, I'm totally the opposite head right. of that. You're like, you know, I've got but, a long life out in front of me. But he he literally lived on the knife's edge of death for weeks or months um, Jeez Louise. when he was preparing to deadlift that 500 kilos and when he was getting ready for Worlds. and uh, I remember seeing him in 2016 at the Arnold's uh, backstage, and I didn't really go out and talk to him and interact with him. He was just kind of sitting there breathing, and he was about 460, and he did not look healthy, and I was like, oh, my God, I've seen this before. Yeah, this this guy, I don't know if I'm going to see him again. Uh-huh. And... Um, he did not look healthy. And so that sort of level of commitment and intensity is, you know, something that most people really aren't willing to go to, to commit to. Um, almost kind of a psychopathy or something. And I think that's, you know, the kind of mindset that or baseline that Eddie can work from. And I don't know if Thor has that. Mm. And so... When Eddie steps into the ring, I mean, he is there for life and death, mm. and I I don't think he's willing to come out of that ring until he's the until he wins. Until he wins. Do you, Do you know, know who Matt Hoffman is? 
um, he, he's like the the Chuck Yeager of BMX bikes. Oh he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's flatlined. I don't know how many times he like more or less had his arm reattached after being ripped off. Um, he's been in comas like numerous times, and like his big line was, you know, if if you haven't completely destroyed your body, you know, by the time you're an old person and ready to die, then you've wasted your body, you know. Some people, you know, they're That's... willing to live with a lifetime of pain to push the envelope. And... You know, as you get older, you really just appreciate being healthy and, and, and feeling good. And, yeah. you know, you see these, these horror stories of these guys with all the concussions and the CTE. And, yeah, so it's crazy that... Um... Yeah, to have some life balance, have some quality of life, yeah, and I not, mean, not have spent that, it all. That's what you and I would say, but other people are like, no, win. The name of the game is winning. Yeah. A couple of days ago, and, and uh, we were talking about how MMA is sort of like strongman in a way, where strongman is combining like, Te you know. Technical. Yeah, you have like almost like Olympic lifting and, and power lifting and all these different forms of strength training, and they all come into one with a, a very specific set of like, you know, challenges, I guess. So which ones did you feel like, aha, I got everybody, and then which ones did you feel like, man, I, I'm gonna give up some points here? You know, the, the power events were always kind of the big gap for me, the big weakness, like uh, the gym, gym lift, kind of like, uh, but even then, occasionally I would um, do really well in like a pressing for reps event, mm -hmm. um, if it was some kind of variation. I was never much of a gym guy, really. Um, okay. You know, I like to do some deadlifts and this and that, and I had a strong deadlift, and strong press and strong squat and all that, but compared to literally the strongest men in the world, um, you know, I was a good rung or two below on the ladder most of the time to those guys. I think the, the chemicals, you know, me not using a bunch of performance enhancing stuff, um, certainly made the playing field not level. Okay. Um, but then again, my natural strengths and natural attributes were sort of in the moving events, um, the farmer's walk, the Conan's wheel, the um, truck pull, the um, you know stuff like that. And I, I don't think even strongmen themselves um, really stop and think about how incredibly dynamic the sport of strongman is and technical it is. Sure. And. Because some of these are just like intrinsic. So like when I wrestle, I know how bodies move. And I'm assuming you guys can look at something. So your, your uh, internal physics engine is probably really good as far as like building for some, things. For some of the guys. And, and I think it, it evolves over years. There's, there's a certain um, natural athleticism or natural sure. puzzle solving, physical puzzle solving kind of three-dimensional functional strength intelligence. That's, right technique. You have to be able to adapt because every contest has different equipment. We call it S-tier cerebral function. S-tier cerebral Yeah, I can't even say it. <laughs> yeah, neocortex cerebral function is a is high functioning frontal cortex of your brain, which, you know, obviously is going to help you with spatial dynamics and the S class is just okay. being a, a nerd. God bless you and your nerddom. I mean, you've got incredible knowledge and experience and expertise. And I appreciate that. I'm like super blessed to be here getting some help. I think very few people have the passion and the ability to uh, take it to the level that, that you and your staff are doing. Yeah, I've definitely, the, the staff definitely makes me look better than I am, that's for sure. Well, you know, a team is an awesome thing and you've, you've created a team. Yeah, shout out to Pat Pacheco, shout out to Maya. They've done great work. Obviously, you haven't had a whole lot of traumatic injuries while training, right? Right. What uh, What are some of the ugliest things you've seen? Because I was thinking about... Oh um, so, like, Mark Phillippe, 98, my first World Strongest Man, uh -huh. doing the car flip in the sand in Morocco. Uh -huh. um, the car came back on him and ripped his, his quad off his knee. Oh. Um, and then, like, two years later, after he's re rehabbed, we have this super heavy Conan's wheel and... Sun City, South Africa, 2000, um, in the qualifiers, all 30 guys, each each five groups of six six men had to do the Conan's wheel, and it was so crazy heavy, uh, Mark snapped the quad off the other, <laughs> off the other patella. You, you haven't fully torn any muscles? Nope. Wow. No. Even I have a torn pec. <laughs> Yeah, is is that the bruise on your arm right now? No, no, that's, that's me being stupid little, wrestling. A little bit of a bicep tear right now. No, that's uh, John Jones. You know, when we oh, get into that's, camp, that's a contusion. Yeah, he 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 starts calling out all the coaches and makes us wrestle each other. So and was that his iron grip on your arm? Or no, what? that was actually one of the straight coaches. You know, 
So uh, yeah, every camp he calls people out. He's like, striking coaches, you got to wrestle. And I was, you know, I'm standing there. He's like, all right, you get the straight coaches. And I'm like, and I haven't wrestled in three years. But then, you know, he can't back down, right? So he would have. He would have been smart. He's like, I'm not going to get hurt for this. And I'm the dummy. <laughs> He's like, for what? What are you, Did you win a prize or no? No. I just get arm bruises for... It looks a lot better today. Yeah, it's, it's clearing up a little bit. Yeah. Huh? So we're going to open up my AC now. Yes, yeah, so you're going to try And when you first back. tried this a few days ago, I was like... Ah! And no way are you doing this. It was it was scary as shit. Yeah. You caught me that time, so you're definitely getting stronger. <laughs> Go ahead and pull. That's strong though, I'll tell you what. It's a lot stronger. And like when we tried it two or three days ago, it was like, no, we're not even. I, I had nothing there. I had yeah. zero strength. You almost threw me there. I'm try to relax completely. <sighs> This is physics, folks. That's <laughs> <laughs> a lot when I use my lats. Really <laughs> 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 strong. <laughs> He's definitely got the strength back in it. <laughs> you saw my so, face. <laughs> oh, that was me again. <laughs> so you're trying to get in there to I'm trying AC? To turn, I'm trying to turn the shoulder blade back. Okay. <clears throat> He's definitely made me work out this week, man. <laughs> I keep having to make sure I get calories in before Phil goes in. <laughs> <laughs> my arms are shaking. I'm, I'm used to being able to... Gotta have the physical advantage over most people. Oh, God! Woo! I guess you found a nerve. Yep. And what you're doing is shutting the muscle down right now. So one of the theories behind it, and I sort of subscribe to this, is when you, when your body touches something hot, there's a spinal reaction. Whoa! <laughs> To pull you away from that. <laughs> um, so your body has these built-in survival mechanisms. So when something pierces you, your body will turn off the tissue to limit damage. So when your body feels something go into the muscle, like a needle, it will basically, it's like going like limp-armed, and maybe the survival mechanism is like an animal biting your arm, and then you, you let the, uh, the limb Uncle. go completely limp. <laughs> Uncle. Seems like a lot better. That was a little better. Yep. Okay. Let's sit again then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to move the collarbone a little bit manually instead of trying to just okay. really reset. And maybe what we need to do is move it down that way as well. Yeah. I actually yeah. poured the sternum a little, huh? Huh? Yeah. Try to keep going. So London, South France. Yeah, draw needling with little electrical stem on top, huh? Yeah. Woo! Voltage down, frequency up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you're thinking about having a political cure going for? Is that right? I said nope. <laughs> You know, I, I give it some thought every once in a while. Once once again, strong men are occasionally prone to grandiose thinking. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, but it's just like, why be the, the nail sticking up? Because you're just going to be a target. You're right. just going to get pounded by wackos on either side. Yep. And, you know, if you are successful getting into office, then it's like, can you really affect any change? I'll tell you when to go back. Be a little easy on him. He hasn't been able to get this position for a long time. Pull back, pull back. I'm not set. So does that be a little easy on your setup on him? Okay, so we'll go nice and slow. Yep. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Pull, 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 pull. You're going to have to choke. <laughs> you're going to do it. Yeah, that's not good. That's all so I got. Your, your contact needs to be down his elbow. Okay, let's try. One more time. All right, give me 10 or 20 seconds to recover here. So put this hand on his chest to create the leverage. Right here. So you're pushing off yeah. his chest with your, okay. the back of your hand. Ready? Go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Pretty good there. Ah. That's, good That's just a little tender from where you cleaned it out a couple days ago. Just on that like part of the lat right there or something. What? Mm -hmm. So we just try to keep taking for a So the massage guns are good for figuring out which muscles really are problematic. They're not long term, but they really tell us where the muscling's will work because they're instantaneous, the changes from the vibration. Okay. So if you really, like if your massage person is really trying to figure out what they need to work on the most, they can use the massage gun temporarily and then keep checking the range of motion. Okay. And whichever one yields the most change is what needs the most actual like, scraping and deep tissue work. Oh, so close.